Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. The fly you see in the vise is one of Kieran Jenkins' signature ties for fooling mill. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise is a Hanak H200 barbless hook. It's at size 10, it's on a heavy wire and it's finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today for this fly is from Simplify and it's the Nano Silk at 12 watt. As always, with the Nano Silk and the Hanak hooks, I like to put a little bit of super glue onto the shank before catching in my thread just in behind the eye and laying down a bed of silk. Come all the way down past the point of the hook. The 200's got quite a long point, so just uh, make sure you come right past and you're probably about two or three millimetres from the bend. Now for those of you who don't know Kieran Jenkins, he's a, a very successful Welsh angler and he works for Airflow. He has a range of flies on Fooling Mill, definitely worth checking out. They are absolutely fantastic and they all look like fish catchers to me. So I'm going to be using some cock hackle feathers for the tailing and I'll just pull them out try and hold this up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pull them out at a 90 degree angle from the stem and what this does is it brings all the tips into alignment so when I lay it up to the hook you can see all my tips are just about in line. So I want about the length of the body, sorry the length of the shank should I say, I'm getting myself confused, <laughs> that's uh, very easy nowadays and I'll just tie that in. Now I'm going to get rid of the the uppermost part here, not too much though I want to remain, keep that sort of bulk, it will just keep my fly nice and even in the body and that's quite important for this pattern. So I think uh, Kieran calls it his black and red cruncher and uh, it's just another little variation, it's a kind of uh, to my mind it's a mix of the, the Nemo Cruncher and the, the Muskins fly. So I'm using some uh, Simplify 0.2mm red wire for the rib. I'm going to tie that in next. Now I want to tie the wire in like I did the tail the entire length of the body. And this just keeps it all nice and even. Now half the, half the thing with time flies, especially these um, nymphs, it's all about proportion and if uh, you, the more even you can keep the body the better off you are. So, so far so good. Next thing we're going to do is tie in the body and what, what I'm using here is some uh, pheasant tail, it's been dyed black and I'm going to catch in between two and three strands. Now I catch these in at the tip and I'm going to wind all the way up to around my thorax area. Now there's going to be quite a lot going on at the front of this fly so you've got to leave yourself plenty of room at the front. So once I've got my thread up to there I can put them extra turns in so that I can use the rotary function on my fly time vise. If you haven't got a rotary function you're going to have to do it the good old fashioned way uh, but what I like about this is when I'm, you can see as I'm turning the tail, sorry, as I'm turning the hook, you can see I'm easily able to avoid the point of the hook, which is uh, extremely sharp and long on the 200. So you've got to be very careful. If you're just wrapping up manually and you're not using a rotary vise, then just be careful not to catch that hook point. It will ruin your day. So. My feather's not particularly long, I've had to come all the way to the very end but I think I've just about got enough material to work with and I'll catch that in. Get a couple of turns in front then I can release my hackle pliers. Now I want to get rid of the excess pheasant tail here without cutting everything else. Then I can grab my wire rib and I'm going to come 
in the opposite direction to the way I rotated the pheasant tail. Uh, I'll bring it up again to the thorax area. I'll get a couple of turns in, like so. A couple of turns in front, and as always, never cut wire, just twist it away until it comes away in your hand. Now, the next thing I want to tie in is some holographic red tinsel, and I've got a little bit off here that I have been working with, and I'm going to catch that just in at the the thorax area here. Just pull that back slightly. Don't want it encroaching onto the eye of the hook. So, how much of this do you need? I like to put more than I need on uh, because the next stage of the fly I'll be able to hide quite a bit of it. Now again, I'm just using my nano silk here to build up the thorax area slightly just so it brings it in line with the rest of the body. Quite a slim dressing this. So I'll bring that to about there. And then the first turn is pretty much on top of itself. And the next turns are starting to cover that thorax area. Now you don't need to worry about coming all the way to the front. I'm going to stop it there. Get a few turns to secure it into place, pull back your excess, get another couple of turns in front of the material. Now, this stuff that I'm using here, uh, I don't know what it is, it's very old, so there's the label. It, it's all I've got left. It's not very good, I might add. So I don't know how well you can notice on the camera, but I see little bits of silver coming through the red the red holographic tinsel, which I don't really want, but I'm stuck with it because it's all I've got left. So, next, we're going to add a little bit of dubbing. Now, on the original Kieran's pattern, I'm not quite sure what he used at the front. What I'm going to use is some copper, iced copper dubbing from Semplify. I've just taken a little bit out of this multi-pack and I've got it in my hands here. It's kind of it says copper, I think they've just said copper because they didn't quite know what else to call it because it doesn't look very copperish to me. But uh, there we go. Uh, I don't make make the decisions at Semplify. So I'm going to bring that all the way back. I'm going to try and cover up some of that silver, which uh, I don't really want showing through the red. Then I can bring it to the front of the hook. So that looks... Uh, not too bad, yeah, I can live with that. The next thing, so instead of a cock hackle, what uh, Kieran uses at the front is a hen hackle. And I, th I suspect the reason for that is the, the movement. So a hen hackle, you're going to get a lot more pulsation in the water with a hen hackle. It's a much softer fibre than, say, a cock hackle like I've got here. So you know, each to their own. If you want to use a cock hackle, I'm pretty sure it'll work just fine. But I'm going to use, as Kieran did, a hen hackle. So I'm just going to catch the tip in with my hackle pliers. I'll pull that back and I've got this little tag at the end here. Now I don't need all that, so I'm going to just off camera snip that away. And then I can catch in the tip of that feather. And next we can grab the hackle pliers and we can simply wind up our hackle. Now I've tied this on a size 10 purely for the fact uh, it's easier for my old eyes and it makes a better tutorial. But I dare say, if I put some concentration in and switch all the cameras off, I would be able to get this fly down to possibly a size 14 hook. Um, but it, it's not very practical doing that on a tutorial. So I've got that trapped in. I'm going to pull everything back behind the eye now. And I'm going to start working on my head. 
Now, I like a nice neat head uh, for a size 10. That looks about right. Then I can grab the remainder of this, pull it away. Just bend that hackle to my will. Then I can come in with a whip finish tool. Just make sure everything's back. And then I can just snip away my thread. And there we go. Kieran Jenkins Black and Red Cruncher. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you like, I'll stick a link to Kieran Jenkins' page on the Fooling Mill website. He's got some excellent patterns and I hope to tie a few more of them in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.